Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Aircraft carriers can accommodate up to 90 different planes above deck. But it's what's below deck that's really surprising. Especially this tiny space which remains to be an integral aspect of the process of launching aircraft from the deck. How? Fire. Let's look into a day in the life of special crew members working on an aircraft carrier's flight deck. First popularized during World War II in the early 1940s, aircraft carriers have always been some of the most consistent combat vessels ever used in wartime. Not only that, but these naval vessels were a huge part of the attack on Pearl Harbor by the Japanese on American soil in early December 1941. In addition, aircraft carriers played a remarkable role in the ocean-based battles of the Pacific Theater, including Leyte Gulf, Coral Sea, and Midway Island. But historically speaking, the first U.S. aircraft carrier created was the USS Birmingham in the heart of Hampton Roads, Virginia in 1910. Somewhere in the Atlantic Ocean, Coordination tactics between the flight control team and the launch bubble took place on October 2nd, 2015. That's when the flight deck crew aboard USS Dwight D. Eisenhower maneuvered equipment aboard this 48-year-old aircraft carrier. Known as CVN-69, this aircraft carrier worked hard during its dedicated development testing for the stealth strike fighter jet F-35C. Anticipated to last at least 14 days, the Salty Dogs of Air Test and Evaluation Squadron 23 conducted this particular at-sea drill. Plus, the F-35C Lightning II Pax River Integrated Test Force played a part as well. When it comes to teamwork between different military branches, there's no better display than Rim of the Pacific exercise drills. Held every year since 1971, Rim of the Pacific, or Rim Pack, focuses on collaboration and communication for all of the different limbs of the U.S. Armed Forces. Working as a team, this global training drill was participated in by almost 30 countries, 40 ships, and over 170 subs and planes. Besides this, though, each aircraft carrier's Ouija board controls every movement on board. Spanning from Hawaii to California, this maritime miracle is a magnificent example of sustaining and fostering cooperative team relationships.
Meanwhile, island operations were underway as the salty dogs of the Air Test and Evaluation Squadron manned the ship's launch bubble. The launch bubble is a nickname for the flight deck known as the Integrated Catapult Control Station, or ICCS. This explains the unique point of view for this particular takeoff mission, which occurred on October 4th, 2015, across the Atlantic Ocean. As the Salty Dog Squadron sailed along, the crew prepared an F-35C Lightning II carrier for its quick journey overseas. The destination was clear, transporting the F-35C to another aircraft carrier. But USS Dwight D. Eisenhower isn't the first in-class carrier in the world. That would be the USS Gerald R. Ford, a leader of its class in terms of its state-of-the-art technology. Valued at nearly $13 billion, this rare supercarrier is one of the most expensive ones on the entire planet. That's why the stakes were high on November 9th, 2022, when the Gerald R4 Carrier Strike Group tested out its flight operation capacity. Deployed in the depths of the Atlantic Ocean, it's trained next to the greats like the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, or NATO. The goal is simple, stability and peace at sea. This precarious position is the ultimate last say for the sailors aboard an aircraft carrier flight deck. Their job is one of the most integral on the ship, to create teamwork, efficiency, and quality control in the midst of controlled chaos. For those who don't know what a catapult officer is, they're better recognized as shooters. Trained as military leaders, specialized shooters tell the flight deck crew when a jet is good to go. meaning it's ready to be shot into the sky. As the ship's conductor, so to speak, catapult officers are equipped with jets. afterburners, and glow-in-the-dark batons to complete their commissions. Step into Port News, Virginia, where Petty Officer 3rd Class Robert Stammer captured the USS George Washington mid-catapult installation on December 23rd, 2020. To tell you the truth, this Nimitz class, also known as CVN-73, was truly a spectacle as it underwent its refueling complex overhaul at Newport News Shipyard. Taking several years to perform each project, 
This extraordinary system overhaul includes everything from modernization and upgrades. Not to mention any repairs the ship may need to stay on the seven seas. Called RCOH, this procedure is only performed once in 50 years for every military aircraft carrier. Along the Gulf of Alaska, real-life flight deck ops occurred on the USS Theodore Roosevelt. Recorded by Seaman Eduardo Torres on May 12, 2021, an aircraft took flight thanks to the Gulf of Alaska and the Joint Pacific Alaska Range Complex Flight Operations Deck. In the midst of Exercise Northern Edge 2021, the military gathered aircraft together to perform fanciful flight expeditions. The point was impossibly simple, to display the seamless power of an aligned aircraft carrier team. With so much at stake, flight deck operations really function as a fully choreographed stage play or ballet. from launching an aircraft to recovering one. The process relies on crew members fulfilling their roles on the ship. Based on different helmet and jersey colors, the flight deck is operated by five divisions. V1, V2, V3, V4, and V5. Together, USS Theodore Roosevelt's team works to move aircraft, spot catapults, and man launches. They also hang out in the hangar bay, fuel planes, fix fuel pumps. Don't forget about the primary flight deck ops crew, including the air boss themselves. On November 3rd, 2014, the U.S. military witnessed miracles happen as it made aerial history for the most historic landing on a maritime vessel. Called an arrested landing, a plane has to rapidly decelerate before it lands on an aircraft carrier at sea. Carried by an F-35C Lightning II carrier variant, the Joint Strike Fighter landed safely aboard USS Nimitz on the San Diego coast. Powered by arrestor gear, this efficient equipment makes an aircraft slow down in a safe manner before it lands at sea. Aided with steel wire ropes and a tail hook, Arrestor gear was crucial for safely landing on USS Nimitz for that fateful trip. If it weren't for all the training that goes into aerial arrested landings though, this journey may have been mission impossible. Thankfully, between rim pack and routine drills for every branch, the November 3rd landing was a great success.
celebrated for making last minute judgments. The Landing Signal Officer, or LSO, ensures the job gets done. In fact, as they guide descending planes directly onto aircraft carriers, the LSO is even more in tune with the plane's landing than the pilot is. Just like a beautiful ballet, aircraft carrier flight deck crews are all about strategy, precision, and performance. They may wear different helmets and jerseys, but they all play for the same team the U.S. military. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.